Mm. So then, mm. for you to know that you have hemorrhoids, yes, um, it begins in a confusing manner, I would say, and I would put confusing in quotes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you'll feel itching mm -hmm. at the anal region. Uh -huh. And when you feel itching at the anal region, what comes in the mind of everyone? Nino. Hemorrhoids, you may ask, what are these? Piles, you may ask again, what is it? Are they health conditions? Do they affect our relationships? That is what we are going to look at today. What are they? What are the causes? Where do they come from? How have these two or this condition affected our lives in one way or other. As my viewer, have you ever experienced a pile or piles? How did it affect you? To take us through this is my guest today. She is a clinician and she's going to introduce herself. She's a clinician, Josephine. She's going to take us through this very, very important area that sometimes we ignore, but silently it is eating us up. It is affecting our day-to-day -day activities and relationships. And so that I don't take much time, without further ado, I would like to introduce her to us and she's going to tell us what she does. How can we be able to protect ourselves? How can we be able to prevent this condition and how can we live healthier and better lives? And as I always say, Health Now Show is your health friend in all matters health. And without further ado, I want to welcome Dr. Karibu Sana. Thank karibu, you. Karibu, Karibu. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madam Jen, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, that you've given me to come so that uh, we can discuss today and learn. They say knowledge is power. So by learning, we empower ourselves and we empower the public. So um, my name is Josephine uh, Nyaga. I'm a clinician by profession. I'm also a forensic expert. I'm also a lecturer. And um, I teach in one of the universities in this country and that is uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology and today I'm excited to come here so that we can be able to learn together and empower ourselves as well as empower the public. Thank you very much Josephine and Karibu Tena. Asante. Karibu Karibu Tena. Asante. Now when we talk about piles or hemorrhoids, today I'm learning a lot of, uh, a lot of words. Hemorrhoids when we talk about that, to us, lay people, can you define what is hemorrhoids or piles? <laughs> All right. Yes. When you talk about hemorrhoids, mm -hmm. um, this is, um, it is a condition, mm -hmm. and uh, we usually call it a surgical condition mm -hmm. that uh, occurs um, at around uh, the anal region mm -hmm. or the rectum. Mm -hmm. This is the place where the place or the part of the body that is used for relieving the body yeah. of waste mm -hmm. or the place where stool is passed out through. Yeah. So um, you find that uh, due to pressure to the blood vessels that are around that area, these blood vessels, they tend to swell and they become inflamed. So when they swell and they become inflamed, that's the time we say that a person has hemorrhoids. Yeah. If I was to explain uh, information in a very simplified language, I would say, uh, if for example, you hit by something 
on the face, on mm -hmm. the hand, wherever, mm -hmm. you always realize that that place swells. Mm -hmm. And on a very keen look, you'll find it has become reddish. Mm -hmm. It is more reddish than the other part, mm -hmm. and you find it is painful. And if you go ahead and touch, you'll find it is warm. All those are the characteristic of what we say is inflammation. So when we say that a blood vessel is swollen and it is inflamed, that is what you're trying to describe. And what has caused this swelling and inflammation? It's because of pressure. So to mean that there has to be something that is causing pressure to the rectum area and the anal region that is pressing onto these uh, vessels or blood vessels and making them to swell mm -hmm. and bringing about what we call as hemorrhoids. And when we are still there, I would want to clarify that we have two types of hemorrhoids. Okay. We have what we call internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids. Uh, Most internal will be more so inside, there will be a bit up there, yeah, up there in the rectum, while the um, the external ones will tend to be a bit lower near the skin of the anal region and they can actually be seen. But as we shall continue discussing, we'll be able to understand more when they can be seen or how they'll present, especially for the external ones that somebody can be able to see. Okay. Yes. Well, <laughs> I'm looking at you, I'm like, with very sharp eyes when you talk about the two levels, yeah. the, the the kind of inner, more internal, yeah. and one more external, not necessarily external, but yeah. close to the, the anal region exterior. Yes. Um, that is the definition. Yes. What causes this? What causes the hemorrhoids, okay. the piles? Um, as I said, um, since uh, hemorrhoids, it's the swelling of that vessel and it is purely due to pressure. So the question will be, what is this that can cause pressure at that region? Mm -hmm. The rectum, mm -hmm. the anal region, mm -hmm. what is this that can cause this kind of pressure? And uh, I would say, um, first and foremost, um, the obvious one eh? or the commonest cause mm -hmm. is, it dates back to the way we feed. Yeah, okay. you find that uh, many people will tend to um, ignore feeding on refugees, the greens, taking water. Some people will even attest you that they don't take water, okay? And that they don't feel thirsty, so they don't take water. So what happens is um, if uh, you are eating habit, uh, you are eating less roughage or less fiber in your diet, you will find that um, uh, the digested material tends to overstay in the large intestine. When it overstays in the large intestine, from our biology, the function of the large intestine is to reabsorb water from that digested matter. So um, since uh, you've consumed food that is less in fiber, that food tends to be digested slowly and it tends also to overstagnate in the colon or in the large intestine. So when it stagnates there and a lot of water is reabsorbed from it, then it becomes hard. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it becomes hard. So as it is coming out as hard stools, those hard stools can really cause a lot of pressure to the vessels that are around the rectum as well as the anal region. And that is one of them. The other one is uh, it can be just pressure from, um, um, from up or from the trunk or region. The trunk region is now there, the mid part of the body. Of course, we have the head, we have the waist downwards. That part that is in the middle is the trunk. So this trunk can either be in form of obesity for those who are obese, so you find men, Kona Vitambi Kubwa. There are also women who will have trunk or obesity. Yeah, uh, they, are, they are really fat, yeah. You can also find it in pregnant women, a woman who is carrying a baby in the womb. All that will apply pressure, so much pressure down there. That pressure that is applied down there can be able to lead to the swelling of those vessels that will eventually give us the hemorrhoids. That is one of them. I mean, the second one. Um, the other thing, um, it has also been noted, sitting for very many hours, you know you are putting all the weight to that area. Yeah. So for those office guys where you have to sit for so many hours, it's not advisable. Don't sit from morning to evening, you're clearing your desk. That sitting, you're applying so much pressure down there that can also lead to that unnecessary pressure that may later lead to hemorrhoids. 
and uh, there is also something that is very recent and it is causing a lot of um, a lot of what discomfort to the world today and that is um, anal coitus or anal sex yeah oh. anal sex can also be able to cause pressure to that area remember by nature yeah that was not an area that was meant for that purpose. Yes. So, and that's why you always find that the sphincter is always very tight because the that, is that yes, that which um it is that tight tissue that makes sure you people do not walk around with diapers because they cannot control stool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by nature, God has created that area very tight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the moment somebody engages in these activities, mm -hmm. you'll find there is a lot of pressure, unnecessary pressure that's also being applied to those vessels. Eh? And it has also been noted to also contribute to hemorrhoids. So it is basically pressure. Or even weightlifters. You've seen people who go to mm -hmm. gyms and they are lifting very heavy materials. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can lead to that. Not only the weight lifters, what mm -hmm, when you have mm -hmm. to lift the so stones, much weight, yes. the very heavy stones, the very heavy cement, you need you need a skill or a technique such that you are able to distribute that pressure. You do not put all of it there. Yes, so that um, as in you learn to distribute the pressure so that all of it does not end up at that point because those are some of the sequelae or end results that will come from that. So it is basically pressure. pressure. What is that which can put so much pressure to those vessels? Mm -hmm. Some of those that we have listed. And it is for men and women. It's men for both. and women. It's for all of us. Yes. You see, uh, with obesity, men yeah. can be obese, women can be obese. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. It's only pregnancy, which is a preserve of women. <laughs> women. Yes. Mujengo these days, they are saying it's a task for everyone. For everyone. Okay. Even yeah. going lifting very heavy jerry cans. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, naturally, when you lift, eh, a lot of pressure gets into the abdomen and downwards. Mm. So it is transmitted to that place and it can lead to him, right? Some of us probably go to the market yeah. and buy a lot of things and we carry them. So we are still exerting pressure on our system. Um, they actually say a way of carrying, yeah? you'll find that um, when it comes to carrying ragages, eh, especially yeah. for women, mm -hmm. I think it's cultural. Mm -hmm. You see, like uh, there's that, they are the Kikuyu women will carry on their back. Yes. Yeah. Maybe they are Western women who will put it on, the, on head. the head. But yeah. they actually say when you put it on the head, you have distributed the weight very well. Oh. So maybe apart uh, from. Um, Okay, for that one who will go carrying the ragages on one hand and on the other hand, that's why you may consider that a lot of pressure is being applied down there. But putting it on the back or on the head may not apply so much pressure down there. It's only that I would want to mention, even if it's not related to hemorrhoids, mm. that Kikuyu way of carrying, it's not, your body is not well balanced. That's why later on they'll come to develop back problems mm. among other problems. Mm. Yeah. So the best one is actually to put it on the head. Well, well. The one a Kikuyu woman cannot be able <laughs> cannot, to. Cannot. <laughs> yes, cannot. They'll go shaking their necks. Oh, yes, yes. <sighs> but it is the best. That way there is distribution of that weight mm -hmm. to the body. Yeah, I've seen Central Africans, mm -hmm. they, they put the luggages on, I mean, some weight on their head. They're mm -hmm. carrying the, you know, baskets. Yeah. That is considered, you're distributing, you're giving your body uh, a way of, in a way, as in you're giving your body a circumstance where it can be able to take that weight and distribute it uniformly yes. as compared to the back. Yes. So when you carry it on the back, even the posture you pursue is not the best for the back. And imagine I carry like that. At the yes. back, I'm a kikuku human. You may need now to change. <laughs> I as am you going to change <laughs> yes. with that information. Alternatively, and, carry uh, small luggages. Don't it, carry very bulk ones. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I've also seen when we are still at that. Eh? I've seen those who carry on their head. They they put something like a cloth, round fast, and then put the 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 muzigo. The um. luggage on top. I don't know whether it is <laughs> it is just a way of making um. it look better or it is supposed to be like that. I would want to say um, yeah. people believe the shape of the head. Eh? Uh -huh. Not everybody may have a very flat, uh, <laughs> a very flat top. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So others would want it is just to modify so that the head can be able to support it. Yes. At the same time, it also reduces the pressure. Yeah, it reduces the pressure that that uh, bulky cargo is putting onto the head. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I think it's also for comfort purposes. I guess, <laughs> yes, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Tendele basi, tendele basi, eh, sawa. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe from there we may, we have looked at uh, exactly what causes uh, hemorrhoids and you've said it's pressure. So then how will you be able to know that you are developing hemorrhoids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are this person who has been, who has exposed himself or herself to what you've already said. Yeah. Your base you're pregnant and um it's not a must that when you're pregnant you get him right mm -hmm. but it is a risk factor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but even maybe before i go to discuss what you need to look at so that you can know you have hemorrhoids eh? who does want to like understand do we have what we call risk factors like some people will tend to have it more than others mm -hmm. yeah there are also risk factors mm -hmm. when it comes to hemorrhoids mm -hmm. and uh, one of them is like i've said pregnancy Mm -hmm. So whenever a woman is pregnant, it is a risk factor. They may, they may not. Yeah. So we'll see what exactly may determine. Eh? For example, um, if a woman is carrying a multiple pregnancy, multiple pregnancy to me, it's either twins who are there, triplets who are there, or more. Yeah. I've seen women giving birth even to eight kids. Yes, yeah? yes. You can imagine the kind of pressure that can be there in a multiple pregnancy may not be the same one as for that one who is carrying one, one. baby. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have um, age. Yeah. When it comes to age, between um, young people and old people, old people will be more vulnerable to getting hemorrhoids than young people. Maybe the only difference can be the old people will not be able to do very strenuous things. Eh? So then what will make them have a risk? They'll have a risk because as you age, there is loosening of the muscles, the elasticity of most of the muscles that are elastic by nature tends to calm down yeah that's why even a woman will tell you hey, nah, uh, i'm feeling like going to urinate now and then i've been checked for diabetes i don't have i don't understand why you simply explain to them and in a very friendly manner yeah as you age there are some things you need to expect mm. your body starts degenerating instead of regenerating. And part of the degenerations, it includes loss of elasticity. So you'll find even as we are talking about that very tightness that is usually down there, you may find it's becoming it's becoming less. Mm, yeah. The digestion as uh, the digestion may slow down. So you find automatically they get constipation. Are you getting? Mm -hmm, and once mm -hmm. they get constipation that mm -hmm. passing out hard stools, mm -hmm. of course it will cause pressure there. And because also that place is also not very strong, the hemorrhoids will prolapse or get out faster. So you get the external ones faster that somebody can be able to see and report back that they are mm. having some swearing uh, in that place. Mm. Yes. Uh, so just before we go on, eh? yes, please. there's something you mentioned. Eh? Yeah. You said in the large intestines, yes, more water is absorbed. Reabsorbed, reabsorbed yes. Yes. to the to, to the body. Yes, yes. So the that body. the matter or mm -hmm. the waste mm -hmm. becomes drier, of course, and and harder. Yes, there's something that you mentioned earlier. Yes, with me when yeah. we were talking before. Yeah, that to encourage yourself to take water. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do? There's okay. something you told me, and I think this is the right. <laughs> I don't know whether I should answer it now or mm. we should wait for the prevention time. That is okay. Then it is guide us. Oh, it fine. Is, yeah, we can wait. All right. We can wait. But I didn't want that one to. I to will escape. not forget, but let it be suspense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that now everybody waits. <laughs> if I'm that material that says, oh, I'm not able to take water, I don't like water, what mm -hmm, should I mm -hmm, do? Mm -hmm. Let's just let it be suspense. Uh -huh. When we shall be looking at the preventive measures, yes, we shall yes. be able to address thank it. You, thank All you. Thank right. you. Dr. Ali, you are the. You are on the seat. <laughs> Let's go on. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, we are at the point or where we are asking ourselves um hemorrhoids now that today hemorrhoids are being taught yeah. now how do i know i have hemorrhoids uh -huh. now how to know you have hemorrhoids yeah. assuming maybe you're not pregnant or um, maybe you do not have these predisposing factors we're talking about eh? though it is very unlikely you have them if you have nothing that we have mentioned there 
okay though maybe part of the risk factors i may have forgotten there is also genetic okay yeah okay. it has also been noted and this is from studies yeah mm -hmm. that um there are those families that will have these hemorrhoids more than others so somebody will be telling you and my grandmother i heard they had this okay my aunt had this so there's also the genetic aspect where you become more predisposed than other people be looking at health in general we have what you call genetic predispositions that you find some families they have a tendency of getting this kind of a condition that is not um, you can't find it in other families so genetic has also been blamed apart from i mean in addition to the age that we've discussed in addition to those um, factors like the pregnancy mm -hmm. so then mm. for you to know that you have hemorrhoids yes um it begins in a confusing manner i would say and i would put confusing in quotes okay. why i put confusing in quotes mm. is because sometimes you'll feel itching mm -hmm. at the anal region uh -huh. and when you feel itching at the anal region what comes in the mind of everyone minyo Oh, yeah. minyo. Yes. Na mimi najikuna then. So, <laughs> yes. Because if it's itching, mm -hmm. I would imagine mtu yeah, anajikuna. You scratch yourself. Yes. You see what will happen? The scratching will be persistent and as usual. Even when you go to um maybe over the counter, yeah, you'll be told, "Ah, unajikuna ni minyo." Ni minyo. Okay? <laughs> when you walk around those people who walk around with speakers to na dawa za minyo watakwambia, "Unajikuna kuna." You know. So everybody rushes. I feel that is what they say. Yes. <laughs> kuna na huko nyuma unajizuna na huko nyuma that is what they say exactly oh my god yes so um <laughs> the people will tell you ah hiyo ni minyo even if you go over the counter hizo ni minyo and you be given the anti helminth na si minyo yes easy dawa za minyo so what will happen is you'll go take the the anti helminth will not harm you yeah uh -huh. because mostly it's just like a tablet or a single dose yes okay yes but then you realize the itching is not going yeah so you realize okay this could be something more okay those are the early signs the other signs uh will be um the moment you go to that small house yeah after um, relieving yourself yeah after you empty your bowel or passing stool yes uh when you're finishing you realize there is frank blood you'll get blood or when you are wiping yourself with a tissue yes. you'll find that the tissue has blood mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are some of the very first signs you will see and when you see that kind of a thing first and foremost you need to reflect back yeah how have you been like how has been your diet that uh -huh. is one assuming mm -hmm. you're not pregnant you know if you are pregnant mm -hmm. you can automate and the baby is already becoming big eh? yes. you can blame it on that yes. and you can comfortably rush to the hospital and tell the doctor you have started noting one two three yes. and they can comfortably relate it with that pregnancy among others of course they'll also ask you about your feeding but maybe while still we are while we are still in the um, the pregnancy bed i would want to say when a woman is pregnancy a pre pregnant sorry there is also the tendency there is a hormone they release that is released more it's called liraxin hormone liraxin hormone relaxes the entire body the entire system that's why you always find pregnant women being a bit lazy you know they wake up late they do not have the psych and the energy that they had before okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so this relaxin hormone it relaxes even the gut oh so you'll find even the digestion is slow so also the possibility of constipation is high when you're pregnant so it can still predispose yes. so when you go you're pregnant the doctor will be looking at two aspects there there is the weight of the baby yeah and there is um the aspect that you could be having constipation merely because you are having a lot of relaxing hormone courtesy of the pregnancy that's one then from there um once you start noting that and you call yourself a small meeting what is happening mm -hmm. could it be for example um let me say like january hemorrhoids are very common In it january? is after christmas <laughs> yes uh -huh. people have eaten chapatis and meat and that's the time they do not even want to see greens near unasema hizi ni za january you know <laughs> yeah so because of this less roughage consumption they tend to get constipation the pressure goes there we get hemorrhoids 
okay so yes there is the itching that you will get there is the blood that will start noting and also when you see blood eh? i know blood um really it really uh, creates anxiety to many people okay i'm not saying it is only blood that can make you that, i mean it's not only hemorrhoids that can make you see blood eh? there's something we call anovicious anovicious is like cracking yeah we may crack pale eh? and it can also bleed especially when you're passing out stool because it's like ukona place it make a tick and this pressure it may bleed okay you can also see blood especially when you have um cancer of the large intestine more so the cancer of the left side remember the colon eh? yes. from anato from bio biology mm. Yes, yes, yes. So we usually have one of the right side. Uh, we have a type of the right side and a type of the left side. So especially when you have that one of the left side, you're also likely to get what? Blood in stool. Mm -hmm. So you need never take blood in stool lightly. Oh, yeah, oh, you oh, need oh. to go to the hospital so that all those um, things we are discussing about can be investigated. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is one. I think that you need to repeat that part. Okay, that part, especially where you see the left and the the right, eh? and the right. I think it's very important. Okay, what I'm saying is, um, uh, from the pathology point of view, mm -hmm. um, the way um, I'm from the way from the disease point of view, the yes. way the disease presents. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, you can have um, cancer of the large intestine that arises more so in the ascending right ascending part okay the, the right side eh, we call it the ascending there yeah. is the ascending mm -hmm. the transverse mm -hmm. descending yes yes is, is yes. that now uh, clear yeah, it's coming yeah, so it's you coming. can have it on the ascending part or you can have it on the descending part the two of them they present differently okay they will present differently mostly you find the one that arises from the right side is usually a mass yeah a mass that looks like um there's this uh, vegetable that looks like a cabbage and it has like these white parts in the middle yeah mm -hmm. it's called cauliflower or something uh, it looks like a, a cauliflower like a, a broccoli yes a cauliflower uh, like, yeah? uh, it looks something like that eh? yes that's the kind of mass you'll get there but then when it presents on the left the descending part yes. that one looks like um we actually describe it as napkin like napkin ring like mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. maybe these days you are using diapers eh? yes. so the word napkin may not ring a mm -hmm. bell to so but many people ring, but uh, like a small towel with me it, it does yes, yes and it is it occupies the entire circumference yeah and it is likely to bleed so when it is likely to bleed that's why you may also see blood in stools that's why blood in stools you do not take it lightly you want to move and move with speed yeah. And when we're talking of cancer, we need to know that anytime you rush to the hospital early, cancers can be treated and cured. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's only that at times we buy time. And especially for any diseases that is for down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We tend to buy time. We yeah, are shy. Sure. Yeah. We don't know how to go and tell the doctor. Mm -hmm. I want to tell the public today. In the eyes of a doctor who has been trained and gone through a medical school, you don't need to worry which part is sick. Just take it to him or to her. You'll be helped. There's nothing to be shy about. Yes. Because that way is the way you are going to be helped. That is the only way you are going and to be helped. And if you don't talk about it, yes. you will not be helped. You because will not be helped. he or she doesn't know Very what true. you are going through. Yes. It is you when you go home, yeah. back home, yeah. you are like, I would have said this. I would this. have said this. But you didn't say. Now, what we need to know is, um, or maybe what we need to tell the, com the, the, the public or the community is that anytime you go to the facility and you find maybe it is a male doctor who is there, you're a woman, you feel uncomfortable, you can always, um, you can, you, you, first of all, you need to know there is nothing you need to be uncomfortable about. True. Okay? Yeah. As in, even as you open up to that doctor, like, Kukochini, kukohivi, kukohivi. You need to know one that doctor will not examine you alone. Yeah, for your comfort. If it is a male, ma, it's a male doctor. He will always call a female doctor or a female nurse who can be there 
so that as he's examining you that part you consider very private that part you consider uh, that you're so shy about you'll not be uncomfortable because there's a, a, a similar gender there okay that's the way we operate and if it is a woman you are a man sometimes men come and they are shy to say what exactly they have because it's a woman they have found they need to be told There's somebody we call chaperone in medicine. Mm-hmm. Chaperone is this other person who will be called, but it has to be a professional. Of course. So if it's a doctor, they can call Dr. Mwenzake or they can call an us who will come and be there yeah. to make sure you are examined and you're comfortable, your comfort. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're not feeling it's, you know, I'm a woman, this a man, mm, that's you're discomfort. being violated, you yes. know, some, something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That is part of the ethics that we do observe when you are treating patients. So, so we um, should not fear. No, you should you not. Shouldn't fear. Don't fear. Don't fear that there is a place that Tari has not seen. Mm. None. There's no place we have not seen mm-hmm. during our training. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And even in your practice. In our practice, in our training, it mm-hmm. all begins in the training. Yes, of where course. you see the entire human body mm-hmm. in the picture and in the real life. Yes. Yeah. The dead and the living. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to fear. Okay.